The Storyboard Pro interface is filled with different tools, but when it comes to drawing, there are just a few key tools that we can focus on. There's the brush, there's the pencil, we have a text tool, an eraser tool, which is still a drawing tool, uh, a paint tool for filling areas, and uh, a geometric tool that lets you draw rectangles, ellipses, and straight lines. So each of these drawing tools acts a little bit differently whether you're drawing on a vector layer or a bitmap layer. So we're going to do our quick survey showing how they behave differently on each. So starting with the brush and starting on a vector layer, we're going to see in our brush properties, I'm going to pick a brush and a color here just so that you can see. Brush properties for the brush in a vector layer are the size and a smoothness, which is a vector uh, property. And then if we go in deeper to see the brush properties, we're also going to see that uh, there's contour smoothing and smoothing and variations on tip shape. And the possibility is here to use textures, as you'll see on some of the textured tools like chalk. So it is possible to achieve those uh, softer effects within a vector layer. However, it, it makes the vector layers work a lot harder and run a lot slower. So it's, it's wiser when you're looking for soft uh, textured effects, even though you can achieve those in vector layer to look for those in the bitmap layer. So you could see how those um, variations, those properties for the brush when working in a vector layer are one way. But if we look in the bitmap layer and we go to the brush, let me click on the bitmap layer, uh, the properties options have changed. Now, instead of smoothing, we have flow. So I'm going to go to a brush in the bitmap uh, layer. And if you'll notice, it's very, very, very soft. But what I'm going to do, we can control here instead of smoothing, is flow, which basically kind of means like, well, how much paint is getting out of uh, out of the, the the brush and onto the canvas, and so that's nice because you can have a really low flow when you want very light shading, and then if you want something that's much more dense, you can crank up the flow. So size is easy to control, and then some of the other options that when you go deep by clicking that arrow are once again you can control much more control over the maximum and the minimum amount of flow and also the spacing is available and texture the next in our quick survey of drawing tools is the pencil I do want to mention that the pencil uh, is not does not necessarily mean that it looks like a regular graphite pencil the way a pencil is defined in vector programs is that it draws lines that can be easily manipulated by uh, bezier tools and uh, and other control points and if you notice i'm currently on a uh, vector layer but if i switch over to a bitmap layer the pencil icon gets grayed out because that pencil is not available at all in the bitmap layers so i'm going to click back to my vector layer. I'm going to make the bitmap disappear and back here so I can just demonstrate uh, very quickly what the pencil does is it makes lines that can then be uh, manipulated with these control point tools very easily just by bending them all over the place. The next tool on our quick survey is the text tool and this is the one for typing in text as if it were art. And on a vector layer, it works pretty simply. I'll just type out the word text. Your tool properties are over here, and you can choose the size of the text. And this is uh, infinitely scalable, just like all vector art is. Let's go over to bitmap layer and enable that. See what happens when we use the text tool on a bitmap layer. It pretty much behaves the same way as it did on a vector layer. One of the biggest differences in the behavior of tools between vector and bitmap layers is in the eraser. And we're starting out on a vector layer, so I'm going to zoom in here on my vector drawing. And using the eraser, uh, once again the eraser is essentially a drawing tool, it's just that it, it takes artwork away uh, in the same way that your brushes 
put artwork down on the canvas. But if I'm going to erase, my options are the size of the eraser and again the smoothing, which is a vector feature, which just controls how shaky uh, the line is. But if I'm going to erase, it just makes like a razor-like uh, cut. There's no uh, subtlety to that erasure at all. And so sometimes if people want to soften a line, well, you're just simply not able to in a vector eraser because there's no controlling uh, the softness of it. However, when we move over here to the bitmap, I'm going to click on the bitmap layer and I still have the eraser enabled. Let me go to the eraser and I'll see that now we have different options. We can control the size but we can also control the flow and we saw that before and this really indicates the the density of the eraser itself. So I'm going to make a big eraser and the first thing I'll choose is that if I use a hard eraser it's similar to the one that we used in the vector uh, example. Uh, really cuts through it. It doesn't have very much subtlety at all. Let me soften that a bit but with the flow by lowering the flow I get a bit more subtlety on it but it's not like airbrush sort of subtlety it's just a like a lighter version of the stroke less opaque version of the eraser stroke but if I go to soft eraser this is where it makes the really big difference uh, I'm able to go through here and just like using a kneaded eraser I can lower the flow and get a lot of subtlety in case I want to lighten something up and then redraw it later with a with a different kind of brush. So I just went in and I'm grabbing one of my pencils to to redraw that and now I'm back with the eraser. So it's that soft eraser that's going to make a, a much more natural look like you could see in this bitmap drawing that I have right here. The next drawing tool in our quick survey is the paint tool and I'm going to try that out on this vector layer and the paint tool essentially uh, fills areas or it fills shapes with color. So I'm going to zoom in here until I can find a, a closed shape to demonstrate. So I've got paint there. There are a few different options. We're going to go over all those in detail in the paint uh, video. But for right now I'm going to pick a color like blue and I'm just going to fill in that space and it fills in the O very nicely without bleeding out at all. So I'm going to see if I can try that kind of effect on the bitmap layer. So that's when we're going to go over to bitmap and that's when we discover uh, that the paint tool is not available at all to use in a bitmap layer because the paint is kind of a vector tool that works by uh, mathematical equations rather than those individual little pixels. The shape tool is the uh, last one in this very quick survey of the drawing tools and their differences between vector and bitmap layers. The shape tool lets you draw either using a rectangle or an ellipse or a line. So I'm in the vector uh, layer right now. I'm going to pick a color and I've chosen a rectangle and you simply click and drag to get uh, the artwork whether it's a rectangle or an ellipse or a simple line and those can be uh, manipulated just like other artwork in the vector layers. So you can see the different options here when you're using the geometric tools, the shape tools, uh, that there are all kinds of a very specific options how the stroke ends, how the stroke starts, and how the corners join with each other. Other than that, the size really deals with the thickness, and these are some preset thicknesses. So that's what the options look like on the vector layer. On the bitmap layer, we see that it will behave more traditionally with without the, the specific choices on the end. So I can make this uh, softer when I'm working in bitmap. I can change the color. And some of these blurry effects are things that you can achieve in the bitmap uh, layers that are specifically uh, useful in the bitmap layers as opposed to the vector layers. And that's why the, these two different kinds of layers are both useful 
they both have their strengths and weaknesses and just like some painters will paint in acrylics or watercolor other pa painters will paint in oils and you can achieve different things in a watercolor than you can in an oil painting and that's the same thing here is that there are certain strengths that vector layers have and certain strengths that bitmap layer has and you may not use one and you may not use the other and you may combine both but the point is that you have the option